Welcome everybody! Episode 8 of the No Time to Waste live show. Guys, I am so excited for today. I feel like Birdie, uh, my mini Labradoodle, who basically um, just vibrates when she gets really excited or she sees something new for the first time. Um, we have an amazing guest today. Julie Foudy. What? Mind blown. Like, how did Allison get Julie Foudy on her Instagram live show? Guys, don't worry about it. Bottom line, Julie and I, Jules, I can call her Jules, I decided. We're like old friends. You know, it's been a long time since we've talked, but we reconnected. Thanks, Cancer. And, you know, this is just like a regular Friday for us. You know, we just hang out shoot the shit, you know, have a good time. Um, so Julie's gonna join in a second. Julie, uh, I see that you're on already. If you wanna request to join, which should be a button that's at the top, I will let you in in a second. Um, on today's show, everybody, I'm gonna give a quick personal update, uh, share the giveaway winner from last week. Giveaway winner from last week was at Julie underscore Austin 2726. So if you're listening, uh, Julie underscore Austin 2726, you won the $150 uh, Rudy Project multi-sport backpack for all of your triathlon or cruising around town shopping needs. Um, so congratulations on that. Um, as I just mentioned, we have an incredible guest today to wrap up our first sort of eight episode season of this not podcast IG live show. Um, but I am going to share at the end what's going to be happening next um, for all of you that care. Um, so first quick personal update. It's been weather madness here in Boulder. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen in Colorado, but it was basically legit 88 degrees on Monday. And then Tuesday, it was 34 degrees and it snowed. It's September. It was the earliest snowfall that we've had in the history of them recording it by four days. Um, so the weather has been bananas. Um, that's why I'm wearing my snow bunny hat. Um, <clears throat> uh, other updates, I was back on chemo this week. Ugh, felt like ass basically yesterday, but today I feel better. It's like that feeling after you're sick, like after the flu and you like wake up the day after you've had a fever or something and you're like, the sun is shining, like everything is amazing. So I'm feeling great today and I can't wait to actually get outside like a normal person. Um, and uh, the three things I'm grateful for, my army, uh, one of my best friends from college, Clank came and visited. Uh, she drove all the way with her husband and her adorable little girl from uh, LA to come visit me. Um, and it's been really fun the last couple days to spend time with them. The second thing I'm grateful for, I'm building up my home gym. If you guys already know about the Peloton tread, cause you know, whatever, can't take the money with you. Um, the basketball hoop is up, the TV is up, like we're tricking the thing out. So I'm tr grateful for the gym. And the third thing I'm grateful for is, as I mentioned, the warm weather returning, the fact that it's sunny outside, everything is back to normal and there's no snow on the ground. Um, so without further ado, I appreciate everyone giving me like snaps and comments for looking so awesome in the sport wig. I thought about wearing my army, uh, my army shirt today and doing like full GI Jane buzz cut, but like, you know, we have like a fancy guest. So I wanted to like put on my fancy hair for everybody. So I'm going to invite in uh, Julie in one second to introduce, you guys should all obviously know who she is. Soccer legend, right? Stanford standout, 17 years with the U.S. Women's National Team, captain of the team, 1999 World Cup. Everybody remembers that. Brandi Chastain at the end on the penalty kicks, like, you know, taking her shirt off, and then everybody freaked out about that. Um, was in the Hall of Fame, the Soccer Hall of Fame. She's an ESPN commentator and analyst. She created the Julie Foudy Leadership Academy, the Julie Foudy Soccer Camps, which is how I know her from like 15 years ago when I worked at Active. Um, now she's host of this freaking amazing podcast produced by ESPN called Laughter Permitted. She's had guests <clears throat> like I have, like Keegan Randall, but also people like Katie Couric and Jackie Jordan Kersey and uh, Billie Jean King and uh, Robin Roberts and basically every name in women's soccer Pino, uh, Abby, like Allie, everybody you can think of. Um, and most recently, Julie has led a group of like 30 
baller, star-studded celeb and, and athlete investors to bring a women's soccer team to LA um, called uh, Angel City, which is super stoked, uh, super excited, and we're gonna talk about it. Um, she's married to Ian Sawyers, whom I haven't seen in a long time, but he's just a gem. She has two kids, Declan uh, and Isabel. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had Olympic medalists and world record holders and cancer survivors and amputees and some crazy people on this show the last, you know, seven episodes. And you might wonder, well, you know, what has Julie done? Well, one of the main things about No Time to Waste, which we'll talk about, you know, is maximizing your moments, right? And focusing on gratitude, connection, uh, and the third thing is joy, leaning into joy. And when I think about someone that leans into joy and seems to just have a blast every single day in every moment, no matter what comes her way, Julie was the first person that I thought of. So I'm so, so thrilled to bring her here. I'm gonna bring her on right now. Um, I couldn't be more excited. Go about This is just like the coolest thing ever. Can't wait to bring her on and welcome to all of Julie's fans. Yeah! What? What? Oh my God, are we, we are dressed the same. I was like, oh. what hat? Seriously, look at us. Guys, this oh, was not planned. Not planned. Camo, I got to bring my camera down so you can really see my chest. What? <laughs> Mine's from Target. Uh, mine, I think, is from TJ Maxx. Something really pricey. This is incredible. I know. It's like the universe. Okay, to kick things off, guess what I have for you? Now, if only you had smell-o-vision. Oh, bring it. Bring it. So for those that don't know, Jules, and I'm calling you Jules now because we're friends. Um, Jules loves, loves herself some donuts. And on her Laughter Permitted podcast, she brings in maybe not Dunkin' Donuts, but like baller freaking donuts for all of her guests. I, so there's there she went everyone. That was Julie Foudy. Oh she's back. Come here, so my, dog. my my first question to you that's really important <laughs> is of these choices, which mm -hmm. one would you pick? We have glaze, we have Boston cream, oh. we have some sprinkles, and we also have a jelly because I was like, I want to know if she'd pick the jelly. Yeah, I don't really do the jellies. I, I okay. would do mustard filled ones, but not okay. the jelly. Not a big okay. fan. Okay, like a Boston cream? You know, my favorite at uh, Dunkin' Donuts is the chocolate crawler. Usually, I, you do not have to. Thank you, I Allison. did not put that in as an option. I have to go, you know, with, with some sprinkles. Yeah. All right, vanilla I'm or chocolate? Chocolate. All right. So I'm going to put this aside for you uh, in the event. Oh my God, and it's a doodle party. It's a doodle party. First, first yeah. all right, hold on. Now we're really doing it. Say hold hi. on. Can you say hi, Sax? When I told people, Julie thought he's my people, okay. we both have doodles and we literally are wearing exactly the same outfit. Everybody. Oh my God. Look at this. Sister from another mister. Yeah, they're, mine's a baby, little mini doodle. Um, and yours is sna Snags? Swaggy. S swaggy. And this is Birdie. Bert. Hi, Bert. Right. Go lay down. Oh, All right, so man. Let's, like, yeah. let's stop digging around. Let's, like, let's get into it. We got stuff to talk about, man. So oh, well. Like, all right. So, <laughs> basically, if people are like, how did this even happen? How do you... It, it's been 15 years, basically, since I talked to you. Um, when I worked at Active, you were, like blowing up with your Julie Foudy soccer camps, which were like, I mean, that that's an operation. That's like a legit, it's not some, as yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, and so I worked at Active and I was like an account manager and you were my client. And I remember how excited I was to be like, oh my gosh, Julie Foudy soccer camp is a client. Like maybe I'll get to meet Julie. And you know, like we <laughs> obs like hit it off. Yeah. When I told Ian I um, I was going to talk to you, he gives you a big squeeze, by the way. Oh, love him. I'm like, do you remember Allison? He was like, Allison, you connected with her. He totally remembered. I was like. Yeah. But like, it was awesome because basically it was like, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, less than that, when I, um, I shot you an email and basically it was like, hey, like, here's some bummer news. Let's catch up. And you were like, 
done in like two seconds and you yeah. were willing to come on here and I, I really appreciate it. But today is not about, we're not talking about cancer today because that's depressing and a bummer. Um, I, I feel what you're doing to be able to take it and spin it to a positive and say, okay, this sucks. I know what's happening is terrible, but you're spinning it and making the most of your time is incredible. It really is. You Thank you. That. Well, as I told you when we talked before, like, I don't want to take a lot of credit for that because it's kind of like my way of coping. Um, what would be a lot harder for me would be if someone was like, I need you to just like stay in one place and just <laughs> sit and just think about this and just relax. I'd be like, that's my hell. So I'm actually super grateful that I have this stuff to keep me busy. And I have my list of people that I want to have on the show, which you were on. And, you know, it's, I'm grateful, I'm grateful to have things. And as long as I continue to get messages from people, um, strangers, you know, who are basically like, God, you shaving your head, you know, when you had chemo, um, and doing that on on video live like really helped me or you sharing that like really you know helped me so as long as i continue to get feedback from people that say like you're inspiring or you're motivating then i'm going to keep doing it cuz i was looking for i was looking for someone like me 2 years ago when i got diagnosed because the average age of a woman that gets diagnosed with breast cancer is 62 right so to be 38 and seemingly fit and healthy at the time yeah, you know, it was uh, it was baffling. But again, you're getting me on the cancer trap. We're not doing it. It's a party today, man. We got donuts. Um, a, there. What'd you say? That's how you met Keegan, though, right? When you're searching for yeah, Keegan. Keegan Randall. For anybody that doesn't know, so she was she was my first guest. Um, Keegan's incredible. She's a you know Olympic gold medalist like Julie, and she is uh, a cross country ski legend in her own sport has this fantastic attitude and you know she won the gold medal in 2018 at the winter olympics and then like three months later gets diagnosed with breast cancer and has to like go into treatment and she's like the gold standard for physical activity during chemo because the photos of her she was like beast mode yeah. i was in my <laughs> my home gym which i'm working on um and i was literally like exhausted two days ago. And I was like, I'm just going to get on the tread at an incline and just do like a brisk walk for an hour. And I was like, dying. And then I was thinking about Keegan, who like, there's photos of her in the gym being like, ah, like beast mode, no hair. And I was like, Oh, I want to be like Keegan. <laughs> She's great and has a great spirit. Um, which is awesome. Okay, but why you're here is because yeah, joy, I man. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, joy. So like, you know, one of the things I talk about in with no time to waste is like maximizing moments. And one thing I don't want to assume is I haven't talked to you in 15 years. Um, I should have probably told you I was going to ask you this question, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> is there one thing that stands out in the last 15 years? I don't want to assume that you haven't been through your own shit, right? Cause that's life. Everybody goes through challenge. Um, right. Is there one thing you think about from the last 15 years that stood out to you personally as something that was a challenge that you had to really work hard to overcome? You know, in terms of on the scale of what you're dealing with, no. I mean, you have, and with two kids, you, you constantly have challenges <laughs> parenting. Uh, yeah you know, been married for 25 years, that is always challenging. Um, and, I, Ian. you know, when I say to Ian, I'm like, listen, if, if we weren't fighting, something would be wrong. If you know those people that look perfect, and they look all happy, and their kids are perfect, and their car is perfect, that's bullshit. It is not that, right? Totally. I mean, it's this constant spectrum of things that are thrown at you. I mean, I feel like I've been very blessed because I've had you know, stable job and ESPN has been great to us. And we have our camp business and our leadership academies and two healthy kids and, um, and relatively, you know, healthy ourselves. So I, I, I do feel like we've been really blessed, but um, no, nothing, you know, that 
when, and that's why I just my my literally my hats off to you with how you're dealing with this because I think there's a lot of people as we know that deal with it in a much different manner and um, and become angry and sad and internalize it and I get that response as well. Well, I mean, <clears throat> there's a there's a there's a good deal of those kinds of feelings that those yeah. close to me and those that I live with can say, oh, there's definitely some anger and there's definitely some tears. And there's definitely days when I'm like, yeah, not into it. Just not into life, not into this whole thing that is my new normal right now. Um, but again, call it distraction, call it uh, healthy distraction or detaching, but staying busy for me and being in probably like maybe a slightly unhealthy amount of denial is like where I'm living right now. And I'm happier, you know? Right. Um, and that's to me what it's all about, right? It's like all of us have a terminal illness called life, every single one of us. Right. And it's a really terrifying thing to face, especially if you haven't been forced to face it because of illness or tragedy, right? Or crisis. Um, but if we all recognize that none of us have anything, any time that's guaranteed, we could all get run over by a bus tomorrow. Um, so, you know, it's up to us to look at the next 24 hours and be like, how can I make the most of it? Like, how can I make the most so that when I put my head down on the pillow at night, yeah. I can look back on that day and go, I did it, man. Like, I have no regrets. You know, I was in a good mindset because I was grateful. I focused on the relationships that matter to me and I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and that's what I feel like all of us, um, if all of us kind of looked at life in those 24 hour increments, like yeah. I think we would all live a little bit differently. It's interesting too, because your life, when you do start to take on that mindset, your, your life seems to open up as well. Right? Like there's, opportunities and relationships and connections you could never have imagined that all of a sudden come to fruition, which is, is the power of that mindset, right? Which is a hard one to have if, you know, uh, if you're, if you're not staring what you're staring in the face, right? right. Yep. Just every day, like, oh yeah, I need to just attack this next 24 hours. I need to think that way. Um, but it is amazing how much life opens up when you do that. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. I was talking with somebody yesterday and it's like, you know, um, what I'm experiencing now in my life is like a, <clears throat> an intensity that I'm an intense person. So I don't shy away from that. I actually am kind of like, oh, yeah, this kind of suits me. Like, Ooh, this is a roller coaster. <laughs> um, I love roller coasters. Um, but it's like, I have intense feelings. I have deep, deep sadness when I think about the idea that I'm not going to get to grow old, right? Um, or I'm going to miss out on things that I always dreamed of doing. And then I have anger, depending on how much co coffee I've drank that morning. Um, and I get pissed about it because I'm just like, this is unfair. And then, but then in the same breath, I am like overwhelmed with gratitude. And I'm like, just so I think about how much worse my situation could be today. And I'm mm -hmm. like, Oh, like, uh, and maybe it's like a healthy fear of like what the universe can do. But I'm just like, I'm good. I'm totally good. Like, I, I have no complaints today. Yesterday was a great day. And today is going to be a great day. And that's all I can think about right now, because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Okay. Um, but the the breadth and depth of emotion and like emotional experience that is my life now. Um, I believe that I'm living in a way that 95% of the world doesn't live, right? Because we assume that we're going to have tomorrow and we're going to have next week and we're all going to live until we're like old and wrinkly and like eating pudding at like a retirement home in Florida. You know? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Playing shuffleboard. Um, and so like for that, I'm grateful because as I've joked about before, it's very on brand for me, right? Mm -hmm. That I'm living this life of real deep intensity emotionally. And, you know, I'm going to go hard. Of course, of course, I'm not going to like fade into the sunset like a 70 year old, you know, or probably a 60 year old. Um, I'm going to like go hard or go home. 
and like go out Yosemite Sam style. And my hope now is that I want to have an impact and I want to help people see, you know, how you can attack tragedy and a diagnosis like this in a different way and have fun in the process and hopefully above all, like help other people and have an impact. Um, so I'm just grateful that I feel like I have a purpose because if I wasn't working and I was just again, like sitting around all day, not doing anything, I'd be like, what? Yeah. That's, that would be, that would be my hell. That'd be awful. Oh my gosh. And think of all the people who are fighting, you know, something who are going to look to, to this and what you're doing is another source of, of an example, right? Which you were, you, I know you told me, like, I couldn't find that many people who were able to stay active and do things. And, um, and so you are going to be that example for them. That's incredible. Yeah. And it's a passed down thing, right? Keegan was an example for me. When I Googled the, when I very first got diagnosed in 2018, I was literally like athlete, cancer, treatment, physical activity, exercise, like, because I was looking at brochures and getting feedback from doctors that were like, if you can get outside every day for a five minute walk, like, that's a win. And I was like, <laughs> what? This is not, you don't get it. Like I ran 10 miles yesterday. Like this I isn't. Again, please. <laughs> what? Can I just have that doctor voice again, please? Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, let's, so we're gonna, we're gonna, people are here for you, Jules. They're here <laughs> for you. They're not here for me. Um, I've got some questions for you. So the most recent accomplishment that we're like tagging on to you, which is crazy is, you know, you just wrestled up some friends like, hey, Natalie Portman, like, oh, Serena Williams, like, oh, Jessica Chastain. Oh, hey, my Abby. Yeah. Do you guys want to like throw in some cash and like, let's, let's bring a women's <laughs> soccer team to LA casually. And you had 30 people who were like, yes, please. Yeah. Except that, that wasn't me doing that. That was Natalie Portman doing that. And if you're Natalie Portman, you can wrangle the Jessica Chastain's, Jennifer Gardner's, Uzo Duo's of the world. Um, yeah, it, you know, I, I will say that I got the soccer gals rallied for sure, because um, I met Natalie Portman uh, earlier in 20, was it this year or last year? Maybe the end of last year, but, um, you know, and she has been the catalyst. Talk about someone who's like, listen, why don't we have a women's soccer professional team here in Los Angeles? And I'm and she basically said, I'm going to take this upon myself to bring a team here. And she did just that. She she gathered a team of uh, Karen Nortman, who's a venture capitalist out of L.A., mm -hmm. another star. She's actually um, a basketball player, uh, not a soccer player. But she then gathered a friend, Julie Ehrman, who, uh, from like the tech and media world. And so just these badass three who basically went around and said, hey, who wants to invest? And so Nicole, um, Natalie got all her friends and uh, we got some from the tech world, of course, Serena Williams and her husband, Alexis. So, and their daughter is the youngest, yeah. <laughs> youngest investor. Their two year old daughter, right, is the youngest investor in like the history of the world. Yeah. And so when they brought it to me, I said, geez, uh, this seems like something we should all do that are like all this women's U S players, national team players from Southern California would want in on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I ran that thought by Mia ham, who is here in Los Angeles. And she was like, hell yes, let's do this together. So there's 12 of us from Southern California. We call ourselves the angels 12, like oceans eight angels 12. And, uh, and we, uh, are coming in, yeah, as an ownership group, as part of the ownership group, the 12 of us, which is super fun. So either they, they we grew up here or we live here now. Mm -hmm. So there's a connection to Los Angeles. Dude, and so it's, it, the name of this, the team's gonna be Angel City, right? It's the, it's- For now. For now, it's the name, but you know, we'll see going forward. They're gonna do kind of a, you know, a campaign with the supporters groups and all of that. But yeah, right now it's Angel City. And plan is 2022? Correct. 2020. Awesome. Yeah. 
Awesome. And uh, basically, I've told people I have tag stuff for right now. You can follow at We Are Angel City, mm -hmm. right? Or use the hashtag We Are Angel City, and you'll find all the buzz about that, which is soccer fans are like going bananas over it, um, which is super cool. And, you know, it I think it's going to take the NWSL and just. Well, and I mean, think about there was so much concern with the pandemic and rightly so about women's sports and mm -hmm. what was going to happen, you know, specifically to NWSL, the women's professional soccer mm -hmm. league here in the United States. And in the midst of a pandemic, they've been able to announce not just the Angel City group, but a Louisville group as well. So there's two new teams that are coming in, possibly a third in Sacramento. Um, so, and new sponsors. So it's a good time for women's soccer, actually, which a lot of people would not have predicted with the pandemic. It's weird. I love it. Have taken off in the middle of this crisis, like the housing market. I was just reading. I'm like, I know. Zoom. Yeah. yeah. We all had invested in Zoom, right? Ugh. right? That would have been a good one. It's funny. Um, so the WUSA, right, which for those that don't know, um, was the uh, women's league that existed when I graduated from college, I desperately wanted to work for one of the teams and do PR and comms. And I interned with the Philadelphia Charge, which was like Heather Mitt's days. Yeah. Um, and then when I moved out to San Diego, I wanted to work for the, the San Diego Spirit, but they had no jobs. Um, so I had to work for the San Diego Soccers, which was the men's semi-pro indoor team. That, huh? What? What did you? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Connected through the San Diego Spirit. That was my team. I know. I know. Was it? Yeah, you and Shannon, right? Yeah, and Joy. Yeah. And Joy, dude. Oh, geez, man. You guys are like the <laughs> best. And I don't mean that in like in an old way. I mean it in terms of like you guys paved the way. I mean it in an old. We call ourselves the old bags. You can call us the old G's. I'll call you OGs. It sounds, it sounds, we're getting a lot of fantastic comments. People are dying. Um, everyone's very excited about Angel City. Um, yeah, people are like going back. Um, uh, Rob, Robin Wilder goes, we're going back crap nuts. I haven't heard of that before, but that's fantastic. <laughs> um, Bridget Collins 23 is upset that she didn't get asked to invest. Um, and LV for so lover for soccer, Angel City, here we come. Um, so people are super stoked. Pioneers. Agreed, Robin. Pioneers for sure. Um, so I have a question. Um, you, you know, like I told you that you were the person that I thought of when I just really focused on like people that lean into joy and people seem to just have like that great spirit that's like super infectious. And I know Lynn on your podcast talks about how, um, you are, you, your energy, like feeds off of other people's energy, right? So if somebody's kind of high and stoked, you get like higher and stoked. And that's how I am too. Um, what do you do on those days? Because not everybody, you know, not every day is awesome. And even the most seemingly upbeat people like has have feelings, right? And go through tough days. Um, what do you do when you're in those moments when you something awful happens or you're not having a great day or people expect you to be this like peppy jazzy person. And you're like, you know what? Not into it today. <laughs> right. Which is, can be annoying. Cause you're yeah. just like, I'm not a freaking clown. And everyone's like, mm, kind of, and you're like, no, do your tricks. <laughs> yeah. Dance <laughs> monkey dance. Um, so uh, what do you do? What do you, what do you do to when you're in those spots? How do you maintain that? that? I I, I, it's not, um, it's not something I really have to give much thought to. I'm just like a spazzy, uh, high energy person to begin with. There are moments that I, um, I recognize as, especially as I get older, when I'm doing a lot of like, uh, say it's a public event and it's autograph mm -hmm. signing or saying hello to people and taking pictures and you're doing that for extended amount of time. Like my capacity to do that now is like, you know, I can do that for an hour. And then I'm like, I am done. I am done. I can't say hello anymore because it's just draining. Totally. But, you know, back in the day, you could do it for hours and hours and hours. Right. And yeah. you know, I argue there are people who just love that. They feed off of it. 
I, I don't as much, um, but I'm such an extrovert mm. and I love to be social, which has been hard with this pandemic. And I love to be around people. Um, that's where I get my energy from. Right. Yeah. Um, the days that I don't have it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really even, I don't have a lot of up and downs, thankfully. Um, I think I get that from my, my mom who's super, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, she, she doesn't fluctuate much and has always got a smile on her face. And, um, and I, and I just, I think it's, you know, I'm really blessed to have really good mental health. Right. And again, I thank my parents for that. But I, I wake up and I'm super grateful. And I think it's the gratitude part that always, even when you're having a crappy day, I'm really good at finding things I'm grateful for. You know, I'll wake up and go, shit, I love this house. Oh, yeah. my God, our kids are so cute. Or <laughs> I was cooking in the backyard listening to Yacht rock, rock Radio. Come on, please tell me you listen to Yacht, yacht Rock Radio. Yacht Rock Radio. Of course, it's one of my like 10 presets in my car. And I, and I was like, just dancing. If you like pina coladas, yeah. exactly. and getting caught on the rain. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I was like, ah, oh, see? And, you know, and I was in the backyard cooking, and it's, you know, and it's friggin' Armageddon outside. It's like gray sky, smoky, you yeah. know, the world is coming to an end, it feels like. And I was like, we're going to be fine. I'm just going to keep telling ourselves. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, gratitude. Gratitude is like super, super grounding. Yeah, it's huge. And it doesn't matter, you know, I believe that even in the in the shittiest of circumstances, you can find one thing, at least one thing that you're grateful for. And if you can latch onto it and really believe that and feel that gratitude, like your mindset can can switch. Um, we're getting a lot of great Keegan's on the, hey, Keegan, we were talking about you earlier. Um, what up? Yeah. Isn't she crazy? I love her. Um, We're just uh, Okay, did you did you see that race in 2018? Of course I did. That's like literally how I like found out about Keegan because I oh. wasn't a cross country person. God, I always yeah. tell people, you want to watch the coolest race ever? Go to the team sprint. I think it was or team relay. I forget what they call it in cross country. Um, because the commentator went absolutely. He can, I know, because they were like, there she is. She's yeah. coming in. It was like the most amazing. Keegan, donuts, Keegan. Keegan probably doesn't eat donuts. Keegan's like, what? Like, I'm just like slamming wheatgrass all day. He's like, like running out. Team sprint. The team sprint, Keegan said. Okay, nice hats. Thank you. Um, all right. So um, I want, I, we've gotten a couple questions. I do want to give uh, every, uh, at least one question in one second. Um, but I do want to do the no time to waste rapid fire. You know, it's not, we don't have squeakers. It's not like your freaking quiz. You can't prepare for it. So don't think that you should have crammed. You ready? This is what I think I used with Keegan. Yeah. All hey. right. Keegan, Keegan claims she just, she already ate her donut this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's your, here's your no time to waste rapid fire. Uh, well, let's well, let's do one audience questions first, and then uh, we'll wrap up and let you get back to your your day. Um, okay, so oh, this is interesting from uh, Liz Allen, whom I used to work with at Active um, on camps, and she actually met you. And we have a great photo that I found in my my, my files the other day. Liz wants to know, Julie, I want to know about having Olympia as a co-owner. Are there any tantrums during meetings? <laughs> we have yet to have our first full ownership meeting. It's on September 25th. I will get back to you on that. All I right. And the meeting for us. That would be fantastic. And for those that don't know, Olympia is the daughter of Serena and her husband, I believe it's Alexis, who yes. is the founder of Reddit. And their daughter, Olympia, is two years old. She is actually on like the manifest as the investor, making her one of the youngest investors in the history of the world. <laughs> all right no time to waste rapid fire it's happening it's okay. happening <clears throat> all right don't overthink it okay just, you know just just let it come one of your favorite foods oh donuts donuts awesome glad i brought them for you two um something you think of that you're proud of oh kids kids 
I can't. Uh, one, one thing you're grateful for. Swaggy. I'm great. Swags. Hey, doodle love. It's a doodle party. Look at that I'm face. so grateful for you, Swagalicious. Swags are the best. Um, uh, last person I said I love you to. Look at She wants the donut. Uh, uh, my husband. Oh, no. Yeah. I think my kid this morning, as they were going into their virtual Zoom, which takes a lot of I love yous. I was like, don't forget I love you. You got this. Oh, I'm my God. It's hard. Yeah, it's um no thank you. I just have a dog. That's all I can handle. Um, one place you want to travel to after the pandemic? New Zealand. Oh, well, have you been? I mean, no COVID. They've totally mm. crushed it. I so know. Have women leading the world? Have you have you seen that article in Forbes? Yeah. All female leaders have all their numbers down. I was like, oh, and I wonder why. Hmm. Who had to lead? People. Maybe there's. I don't know. We know. I like uh, New Zealand. Okay. Um, North or South Island, or do you not care? I want to go to all of it. In fact, yeah. the next Women's World Cup is being co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Awesome. I tell to ESPN that I should spend the entire year there investigating all of the sites. Right? I, if I am alive, would like to come visit and provide my marketing services or just general merriment uh, free of charge. Yes. But I will, I will be there. Be there, Al. I'm, I'm in. Um, one thing that brings you joy. Uh, anything that I can do where I'm sweating. Cool. That's. Um, a, I mean, like exercise wise. Yeah. Well, I know you're like kind of a generally sweaty person. I'm a generally sweaty person. So there's a lot of things that make me sweat. But yeah. Specifically, physical activity. Things yeah. that are supposed to make you sweat. Put it that way. Um, and then last thing, so uh, what's one thing from a legacy standpoint, I think about it a lot, right? Like mortality legacy awareness is the closer you get to death or facing death, the more yeah. you think about, you know, your legacy and what you want to leave behind. What's one thing you want to be known for? Um, someone that, you know, I do a lot in the leadership space and mm -hmm. Uh, people often, you know, talk about leadership as, you know, someone at the top of the mountain, mountain shouting down. I always think of it as actually a bottoms up type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. I want to be lifting people up. I want to be inspiring them to be better, to get mm -hmm. out of their comfort zone, to try new things, to, to dream bigger, whatever it is. And so I hope that one day uh, people will look back and say that she was great at helping others and serving others because um i think those are the best type of leaders and that and that's how i want to live my life and be looked at that's awesome that's awesome oh man um so congratulations you've completed the no time to waste rapid fire yes. uh, nicely done um uh the you mentioned leadership so the julie yeah. foudy leadership academy hey swags Maggie's got the, she, she stole the donut. Everybody's eating the donut. I'm not going to lie. I haven't eaten this morning and I'm staring at this six pack of donuts going I'm like, right now. I might, I'm going to. All right. So the Julie Foudy Leadership Academy, um, tell me about that and tell me about what we're going to be giving away to one lucky viewer right now. Yeah, I have swag. Oh, I should have brought it up. It's in the garage. I apologize. Um, we have Where our to go. Uh, long sleeve hoodie with the Julie Fatty Sports Leadership Academy logo. Uh, these are all Nike products because we're sponsored by Nike. Cool. We have a cute little short sleeve uh, light blue one with the logo. We have a white one. I think we have a red or navy or something like that. I don't know what our colors are, but we got a lot of swag. We got good stuff. So cool. how, do, how does one win this? Here, here's how, here's, so we're going to reward someone. So a lot of people watch this show because they can't make it at this time slot, which is also why I'm going to be turning it into a podcast. Um, oh. We're going to we're going to reward someone that's here live right now. Um, so how we do this is basically the first per. OK, first, I have to add this because now, now I've had repeat people that are trying to win multiple. If you have won a prize from No Time to Waste live show you. in the last eight are episodes. You do not qualify. Exactly. So 
um, the first person that puts in the hashtag no time to waste right now in the little comment box, hashtag no time to waste is going to win a fantastic prize pack from the Julie Foudy Leadership Academy Stop. of Nike swag. Who's it going to be? Stop. Who's it going to be? If there's always a bit of a delay. Ah, wait, no, you can't. You already won. No, <laughs> no. They're basically people who, ah, boom, there it is. Noble lady 09, <laughs> noble lady 09. <laughs> hashtag no time to waste everyone else now see everybody's late that's it okay. all right that's noble that's lady okay. um dm me no time at no time to waste project noble lady um uh, i will relay your address dm al your size as well yes your size and your address i will relay to my buddy my personal friend jules because that's what i call her now um, and we will get that uh, shipped out to you. So congratulations. She oh. didn't spell it correctly. This is what my mom said. Check again. Um, am I getting, guys, I'm just telling you who came up first. So there, you're welcome, noble lady. Everybody just, just, you know, I'm in charge here. This is my show. So <laughs> I rarely throw that out. Boss. Mm -hmm. You get and a if I to come up with the rules it's so fun being the boss of a show it kind of is cool that's why i was like i want to eat donuts today with Jewel. like who cares um so but congratulations that I um when i win the our squeaky game yeah. and it, she was i get uncomfortable when you get so competitive i was like ah i'm gonna win because it's it, i can win it's my show yeah, it's true you can do whatever you, whatever I can do whatever you want. want i don't care if you're uncomfortable i'm gonna be competitive and win Amen. That's called, you know, it's called being a boss. It's called being a boss lady, <laughs> which I respect. Um, all right. Awesome. So um, anything else you want to leave? How about one, one last thing that you would like uh, people to know about you or one thing you'd like to leave people with that you don't ever get to say, like, because people always have their like canned questions for you. Um. You know, I would like to say that my surfing has improved over the quarantine. It's the one silver lining. But based on my performance on Wednesday, I surfed on Wednesday. I'm going again today. My daughter, Izzy, who's 13, is currently addicted to surfing. So she wants to go every day. So I've been surfing a lot. And I actually thought, okay, I am making great, great strides. Wednesday, I got my ass kicked. Ow. I mean, I couldn't even get out to the lineup because, which is what they call where the waves break. I know. I used to live in San Diego. I like pretended to surf for like 10 years. I could not get to the lineup because mm. I couldn't get through all the whitewash. You know, I mean, yeah. that, you just like, yes. well, there's everything hurt on me. I was like, this is not a sport for a 49 year old woman. It's true. And, my, and Izzy next to me will be like, come on, mom. Come on, mom. You're going to miss the set. You're going to get crunched. I was like, I can't make it. And could Izzy just like, she was like, no problem. And she just paddles out. Yeah, she just cruises yeah. out. I can't, you can't pause. I, I can't, That's you, the problem. It's so exhausting. Everything hurt off my neck, my back. I was like, oh. And then I'm too competitive to give up. So I'm like, yeah. So, and then, so what happened? Uh, and so I, I did catch a, a few waves, but in the end I couldn't get out there. So I, I just kept going. I'm like, no, I'm going to get out there. But by the time you're out there, you're so tired. You can't catch a wave. So hundred <laughs> percent. I just took a Cause then you get out there and you're like, I made it. I made it. I almost died. Why, I made it. And then you have to paddle to get into the wave and you're like, I can't. I can't. I can't. Hard. I can't. And then you, so you just end up flopping there like a fat kid on the, on the board, just being like. I'm just gonna, you take this one. You take, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go. That's definitely me. They call me Olympian with a pooch. <laughs> like, well, I, I think you're crushing. Um, I so appreciate you taking the time to do this. I am just still inspired by the fact that you continue to evolve. I would recommend that everybody listening go follow and subscribe to the Laughter Permitted podcast because it is hilarious you have incredible incredible guests that basically i was like mm -hmm, yes i like that per yes i'd like that person that person you have everyone that i would love to talk to 
Um, and you're hilarious and fun and you have donuts. Um, and congratulations on Angel City. I'm so stoked to see that evolve. I am completely 100% available if you need any marketing support or consulting. I am here. I love um, hey, sister, thank you for being this constant source of inspiration. I, I love it. I'm following you now on this No Time to Waste project. And awesome. I, we need more of that spewing out into this world given there's so much division just healthy joy um and genuine joy so i know it's not easy either so thanks for all you're doing to keep spreading yeah. yeah anything anything you recommend to help me get the word out you just hit me up and i'm down for i'm df dubs i'm down for whatever <laughs> all yeah. right i'll talk to you soon julie thank you thank you bye i now. love you too bye um, so, I mean, psh, how cool is that, right? Um, she's just great, and she's just, she's humble, and she's energetic, and it was just, that was everything. I cannot believe that we ended up with the same freaking outfit. We did not plan that. Can you believe, like, what are the odds of that? Hilarious. Hilarious. Um, so that was awesome. She was everything, duh. I want to leave you guys, um, tell you guys what's going to happen next with this show and then leave you with the quote of the week. Um, so what's going to happen with this is I'm going to take a little bit of a hiatus, fall hiatus. It probably will last um, through uh, the end of September. Um, in the meantime, I am going to be exploring uh, creating an actual podcast, which apparently I'm doing all the work for it. Yes, twinsies. Um, so we're going to do a No Time to Waste Live uh, or No Time to Waste Project podcast. Um, I may be taking these first eight episodes and converting them into audio files when we do set it up. Um, and then basically right now, I'm also setting up guests for the first season, the second season, however we wanna frame it. But the next chunk um, we're gonna do, cause I'm getting connected with some like freaking, as you could just see some heavy hitters here, people some real A-list celebs. I don't know, maybe Julie will hook me up with Natalie Portman and I'll be like, where do you get that fire from? Um, who knows? Abby Wambach, I'd love to talk to, you know, Robin Roberts, Katie Couric, Lance Armstrong. These are all people that have connections to some of the challenges that I'm facing now. They've faced tragedy, cancer challenge. Megan Rapino, like being a trailblazer. There's so much. Also Brene Brown, if anybody knows Brene Brown. Liz Gilbert, Glennon Doyle, like these are the people that I I follow and I'm inspired by. Um, and uh, maybe I'll get them on the show. Who knows? If you know any of those people, hit me up. So uh, super stoked. Um, I will keep you guys posted. Yes, Hatu will always be part of the show somewhere, which again is because this is mirrored, just Utah backwards. Um, and uh it's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm grateful that I have this as a platform and a way to uh, keep myself busy and excited to inspire and motivate and get the word out. So um, stay tuned, get excited. We're going to set it up. And if anybody knows also any um, inexpensive podcast producers or people that could just help me get set up or help me edit a little bit every week, can you shoot me a DM? Because I'm talking to one podcast producer this weekend and I'd love a comparison. Um, anyway, so thank you to everybody that joined. Quote of the week, which I'll put up shortly, um, which I feel like embodies everything that Julie is about. Um, it's a quote by Joseph Campbell, whom I love. Um, and it's find a place inside where there's joy and joy will burn out the pain. So hold on to joy today, find some gratitude, regardless of your circumstance, change your mindset and make the use of this next 24 hours. Um, live and love like there's no time to waste. Thank you guys for joining and I will see you probably in a couple weeks. Bye.